Okay, so let's get into the discography here. So the the first album the band released was called Piper at the Gates of Dawn. And uh, this album came out in 1967. Uh, it was a very important uh, psychedelic album alongside the Beatles' Sgt. Pepper and uh, Frank Zappa's Freak Out. Uh, yeah, this was one of the first psychedelic albums. Um, and it's, it's, a, it's an album that I don't go to very often anymore, but it was very important. And uh, it's the only full record to feature uh, Sid Barrett on vocals and guitar. Uh, very interesting musical composer. Um, now, I don't know the history really of how, of his mental breakdown. I mean, it, it is sort of a part of rock lore, but uh, what I do know is that he was taking too many psychedelic drugs and uh, this sort of um, hampered his uh, emotional uh, constitution and he was unable to continue with the band. Uh, so Sid Barrett was out and David Gilmore is in. And uh, David Gilmore is gonna be their main front man for the rest of the career of the band, uh, obviously sharing that duty with Roger Waters. Um, but for these earlier 70s records, it was mostly Gilmore. Okay, so once Gilmore is in the band, uh, the band hit a bit of a lull with uh, three very psychedelic records, uh, Saucer Full of Secrets, 1968, Moore in 1969, and Uma Guma which is a double studio slash live album in 1969. Uh, good records, but weird, uh, especially Uma Guma. Uh, the studio side of that record is outrageously psychedelic and bizarre. They're all very cool, but the problem is once you've heard the later stuff, uh, it's difficult to not hear where they were going to go. Um, so I think that's why these albums are very hard to get into, because you're expecting a very commercial and pleasant sounding Floyd and instead you're you're getting this weird art thing um, but uh, yeah they are worth checking out because they are very creative the next album Adam Hart Mother is one of my favorites of the early period um, I love this album it's very progressive it, there's a huge um, suite called uh, Adam Hart Mother it's great uh, and then it gets into some more mellow uh, songs on side two Fantastic album cover too. I love that cow. <laughs> it's so great. Now the next album, Metal. Uh, this is the beginning of their of their peak uh, period. Um, just, I mean, the band could do no wrong here. Um, and this was uh, a precursor to Dark Side. Uh, the next album, Obscured by Clouds, is a great record. It's another soundtrack album. Uh, now the next album, Dark Side. I mean, everyone's heard of this album, one of the greatest albums of all time. I think it went 45 times platinum. I mean, just ridiculous. Um, so yeah, don't have to say much about this album. It's perfect. Uh, the next album, Wish You Were Here, this is my favorite Pink Floyd album, my personal favorite. Uh, the guitar on here is just, it's just out of control good. Okay, now the next record is uh, Animals, and this came out in 1977. Uh, so this album is what I call an elusive masterpiece. Um, a comparable album would be uh, Led Zeppelin's Presence, where it's got moments of absolute brilliance on it, or genius, but it's a little hard to get into. Um, and I find this with Animals. I find that I, I have struggled a lot with this record, and uh, I sort of have a love-hate thing with it. Um, you know, I will say, like, the positives, uh, it's probably got the coolest album cover in rock history. I mean, it's just so bleak and incredible. It's got that floating pig. It's amazing. Uh, I love the lyrics. I love the concept. I love the song Dogs and Sheep. Uh, but I think, um, I find that the production can be a little dry sometimes, and it can uh, get a little boring, especially with the song Pigs. And this album is sort of signaling the divide of the band that's going to start to emerge between Roger Waters and David Gilmour. Uh, the band is going to start to take more of a Roger Waters uh, songwriting direction. Okay, so the next album is The Wall. Another huge record. I think it went 30 times platinum. It's got uh, one of the most successful and famous rock producers of the 70s, Bob Ezrin, in the producer chair. Um, yeah, this album is a concept. Uh, there was a movie made alongside it with Bob Geldof. Um, 
had some massive hits on it, uh, like Another Brick in the Wall and uh, Comfortably Numb. Uh, so the next album is one of my favorites, actually. It's called The Final Cut. Um, at this point, the band was just disintegrating. Um, and, uh, you know, you could probably say this was, you know, a Roger Waters solo record with the name Pink Floyd stuck on it. Um, but, you know, I'm a huge Roger Waters fan, and I think this is a brilliant record. A lot of people don't like it. Uh, I'm not one of them. I love it. Um, now, the next record, A Momentary Lapse of Reason. Uh, Bob Ezrin's back in the producer chair. Uh, Roger Waters is gone. Um, I think he just wanted the band to stop, but uh, I think because of uh, legal obligations, the band needed to keep recording. Um, so I think instead of fighting over who keeps the name, I think Roger Waters just was advised that it's easier if he just leaves um, or else he'll probably be sued by the label, be sued by the other uh, band members for withholding royalties. So yeah, it was basically just a very bad breakup. Uh, so A Momentary Lapse of Reason, uh, I like this record, it's good. It's very different from the final cut. I mean, you could almost say this is a, a David Gilmore solo album, uh, but it is very good. Uh, now the next record is called The Division Bell. Uh, this is my least favorite. I think this is the stinker of the catalog, personally. Um, it just sounds like an uninspired uh, 90s new age album. Uh, it's like it looks like Pink Floyd and it kind of sounds like Pink Floyd, but there's no there's no Pink Floyd soul here. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm a big no on this one. And then I think the last record so far, but this seems like this is going to be the last Floyd album, is uh, The Endless River that came out in 2014. Uh, this is apparently outtakes from The Division Bell and it's more of an instrumental record. I don't think there's any vocals on here. I, I, I don't really know what to think of this album. I mean, it, it just sort of sounds like The Division Bell without lyrics. Uh, I'm not a huge fan. Uh, so yeah, I'm, I'm kind of a no on this record. But uh, that's okay. There's, uh, there's plenty more Floyd albums to dive into. And uh, yeah, maybe you do like these new records. Who knows? If you do, just let me know. Okay, thanks for tuning in, guys. And uh, we'll see you next week for uh, episode five, which is going to be Metallica. See you then.